Good afternoon, Ms. Sukta Marani and my fellow friends. I hope everyone is safe and sound at home. So, myself and my group members today from Group 8 would be representing Chapter 12, which is Managing the Organizational Change. From this chapter, there are seven learning outcomes that each of us should know at the end of this chapter. The first one is identifying the external and internal change drivers. Second, we should be able to differentiate the incremental and transformational model or change. Third, we should be able to list out the four approaches to managing change. And fourth, it is clarifying the individual and organizational manage to change uh, or resistant to change. Mentioning the ways to overcome the resistant to change discussing the ways to implement talent management and finally the seventh learning outcome is identifying how an organization can create a learning organization in order to foster their innovation as well so i'll be explaining the first and second learning outcome so the change drivers change drivers are divided into two known as the external drivers and also the internal drivers external drivers means like outside the organization what influences the organization from outside in order to make an organization to change okay so there are six influences under external drivers which is increased competition known as our competitor Competitor for like for instance frozen company ABC have competitors such as Ramli because Ramli also uh, known as an organization who have their own operation management in order to produce uh, frozen foods like burger ayam Ramli burger daging nugget ayam and everything lah. and second is globalization globalization means like and a company will change the organization in order to make sure that they have uh, like development in their business for instance like having interaction with foreign countries like having links like and third is like changes in um, consumer demand as we know one organization is run by the products that they produce and everything the product that they produce confirm they will have their own motive so it's like in order to fulfill the customers need and wants so as the trend changes of course customers need and want will change their taste their preferences will change so the company have to follow and have to change their organization in order to see the trend how is it fourth is governmental regulation governmental regulation is known as law every company has to follow law for instance like abc company frozen food uh, ramli as you all see this company maybe uh, you tell me actually they produce halal food right so like it's a law in malaysia like foods should be halal so that's a law and after government regulation there is um deregulation deregulation means like um Re reduction of government law you know government power reduction like uh, you are not following it like that lah. and last one is uh, resources shortage for instance if a company need to have a very good output like in a quantity that is a lot confirm they will need a lot of resources so sometimes the organization have to change like for instance usually abc company frozen food and beverages will produce like um, almost 500 uh, frozen foods like that 
actually it's not making sense like okay yeah uh, 500 a bit lah so um if the resources like from the normal retailer the organization never get what will happen like of course they have to change their procedure right like okay from now on we will change our procedure like we have to use only this much of resources and everything so like everything the six external drivers influence the organizational change from outside the organization internal changes internal changes are known as inside the organization what influences the organization to change the organizational procedures and everything what influence them first one will be top management top management is like all the management sections you know right like financial manager um human resource operation manager like that if each one of them have any mistake they won't even have an effective process efficient process there won't be anything like that so one of the factor that influence the organization to make a change is because of the top management second is technology changes and technology is like machines now these machines even robotics everything they are changing so technology changes maybe uh, from the view of you know operating and everything will be changed and everything so like the company of course the company would make sure like they save cost and also save time as well and the one is slack capacity slack capacity means like something that the company is lack of for instance like shortages like resources from interior maybe shortages in their warehouse and everything like that lah shortages lack of supply of electric like that fourth is budget changes budget changes mean like as the trend changes of course the budget also will change it doesn't mean like for instance let's take um what we say yeah simple okay we just take sweet and see sweet those days we buy 5 cent also we can get one 10 cent we get two. but now 20 cent we only get three sweets so the budget still changes but for organization maybe the product the output or the input the resources they buy is different value already okay talent shortages is uh, refers to the human resource uh, the employees who are talent shortages like uh, the organization need to change maybe like increasing the training activities training development or how to work the procedures everything should be changed in order to increase the talent rather than making the talent shortages to occur the uh, the last one will be growth growth my in growth will really influence not my will really influence the organization because growth is something that is very important for an organization in order to make themselves famous or make themselves well known as for the global globalization as for this slide we will be seeing the identification or differentiation between incremental change and transformative change so incremental is known as a linear continuous change like to fix problems or to change procedures um meanwhile for transformative change it's radical uh, and tends to be both multidimensional and multi level because it involves like um this continuous shifts in thinking or perceiving things in a short word incremental is something like improving the efficiency meanwhile for transformational change it's like uh enhancing the effectiveness if you all ask me example incremental example it is like um adding new furniture or adding new technologies machines in a in a organization because to fix problems or to change the procedures like this helps us to produce a lot of product in a minimized time so like changing in order to solve the problems of delay like that for transformative change we can tell like strategy thinking um uh, thinking or planning strategies in order to make sure all the process is very effective hi i am sivina rolena benti afizan my mentor number is 
A1E80879. So it's been about the Lumen three step model of organizational change. Uh, basically, these are changes that uh, managers out there uh, use uh, for their organization. So there are three steps in uh, this uh, model, which is the first one is embrace, the second one is change, and the last one is replace. So now I am going to explain about the phases uh, that I have in the Lewis uh, two-step model, which is the first one is the dynasis, uh, the uh, first phase is uh, so. For dynasis is actually the manager, uh, the manager usually um, find out or uh, identify the problems uh, and a root uh, that cause, which is to make uh, the uh, organization uh, uh, more better and uh, have a successful uh, organization. So it's, it is a kind of um, situational analysis uh, which is internal and external environment uh, that uh, to recognize the SWOT which is um, uh, strength, weakness, um, strength, uh, weakness, uh, opportunity, threat and uh, the manager should uh, set the appropriate uh, goals for the uh, organization so that uh, they can achieve what they want and they need to know what uh, specific strategy they need to do to achieve their goals so the next one is um, phase two is unpredicting so basically when people are adequate to change um, the process uh, could be uh, very uh, difficult so what uh, should the major what should uh, the manager uh, do uh, to minimize the resistance uh, to change is uh, the first step is uh, communicating a plan uh, of a change. So, what is meaning by the communicating a plan for change? Uh, the manager uh, should take a lesson on communication, uh, which is the organization to needs uh, the organization needs to communicate with the five views, uh, which is uh, in terms of. Um, why, what, when, where, who, and the last one in one, uh, one H is how. The second one is communicating agency. Basically, people are likely to more uh, be or uh, basically people are like to to accept the change whenever they think that uh, their company are uh, less competitive. So they uh, they want uh, their company uh, to more competitive or, uh, to the other company, and they need to find another uh, another ways uh, to make it change uh, the second and uh, the third one is building quotation uh, usually uh, in a building quotation uh, uh, a good leader needs to give um, a good example uh, to their employees so that their employees can uh, follow uh, their um, example uh, the next one is uh, providing um, uh, provide providing emotional and instrumental uh, men, uh, support. So emotional support can be provided by frequently uh, by discussing the changes, encourage employee uh, to voice their concerns so that um, they can create the confidence in our uh, employees uh, ability. So the last one is uh, encouraging employee participation. So uh, for this um part, uh, there are studies that uh, those who uh, for those uh, employees are uh, follow the training um, have a more uh, positive attitude uh, toward the change. So next, uh, for the third phases is moving or uh, changing. So for this uh, moving uh, for these phases, uh, these phases involve the implementation of the change. So there are few steps uh, that can help this uh, to success in the phases which is the first one is continuing support. So uh, continuing support yeah, when the management are uh, critical payroll uh, to ensure uh, change is successfully by providing patient support after the change is complete. The second one is uh, creating small risk. Um, this is happen when the employees experience are uh, improved and success along the way so uh, it can be the employees can be more motivated after uh, they get their uh, their, their uh, positive part to um, continue the change uh, effort. So the last one is eliminating obstacles. So in 
eliminating obstacles uh, uh, the leadership needs to the identify the barriers the added change uh, which may include the company structure existing process and organizational uh, culture and the last one is uh, 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 the last one is a refusing. So uh, there are few uh, suggestions can help uh, the management to evaluate and reinforce uh, the, the change. Which is uh, the first one is uh, publishing success, which is the management should have known uh, the measurable result of their implementation. And the last one is rewarding rewarding change adoption, which is uh, rewards can include uh, non functional uh, non financial aspect. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Hani Akira Binti Hassan. My metric number is A18 A0167 and I am the employer of this company. Okay guys, this is Hani. Get ready for the next part. Today, we are going to learn about John Cotter's 8 step on implementing changes. Look what we have here. Step 1. Create urgency. Establish a sense of urgency by creating a compelling reason for why change is needed. For change to happen, it helps if the whole company really wants it. Develop a sense of urgency around the need for change. This may help you spark the initial motivation to get things moving. Next is step 2. Form a powerful coalition. Form a coalition with enough power to lead the change. Assemble a group with the power and energy to lead and support a collaborative change effort. Create a vision for change. Create a new vision to direct the change and strategies for achieving the vision. Shape a vision to help steer the change effort and develop strategic initiatives to achieve the vision. Next is step 4. Communicate the vision. Communicate the vision throughout the organization. You need to communicate it frequently and powerfully and embed it within everything that you do. We are going to move to step 5 which is Remove obstacles. Empower others to act on the vision by removing barriers to change and encouraging risk-taking, creative and creative problem-solving. Put in place the structure for change and continually check for barriers to it. Removing obstacles can empower the people you need to execute your vision and it can help the change move forward. Next is step 6. Create short term wins. Plan for, create and reward short term wins that move the vision, the organization toward the new vision. Failure to systematically plan for and create short term wins. Short term wins represent the achievement of important results. Move to step 7. Build on the change. Consolidate improvements, reassess changes and make necessary adjustment in the new program. Cotter argues that many change projects fail 
because victory is declared too early. Real change runs deep. Quick wins are only the beginning of what needs to be done to achieve long-term change. Lastly, Step 8. Ensure the changes in corporate culture. Reinforce the changes by dis demonstrating the relationship between new behavior and organizational success. Make continuous efforts to ensure that the change is seen in every aspect of your organization. This will help give that change solid place in your organization culture. It's also important that your company's leaders continue to support the change. Hi, my name is Punilama Arasu. My metric number is A18B0780. I am as an employer of ABC Frozen Company. Action research. Action research meaning is a change process based on the systematic collection of data and selection of a change action based on what the analyzed data indicate. This is much like the di diagnosis stage of Levin's uh, model aspect that the actual research model insists on a formal research and change management is uh, strategized based on information from research not subjective interpretation. This pro, uh, action research uh, consists of five stages, which is uh, diagnosis, uh, second stage is analysis, and third stage is uh, feedback, and fourth stage, stage is action, and fifth stage is evaluation. Action research is either research initiated to solve an immediate problem or a reflective process of progressive problem solving led by individuals working with others and teams or as part of a community of practice to improve the way they address issues and solve problems. There are two types of action research, participatory action research and practical action research. Denscom, 2010, p. 6. Writes that an action research strategy's purpose is to solve a particular problem and to produce guidelines for best practice. Action research involves actively participating in a change situation, often via an existing organization, while simultaneously conducting research. Action research can also be undertaken by larger organizations or institutions, assisted or guided by professional researchers, with the aim of improving their strategies, practices and knowledge of the environments within which they practice. As designers and stakeholders, researchers work with others to propose a new course of action to help their community improve its work practices. Kurt Lewin, then a professor at MIT, first coined the term action research in 1944. In his 1946 paper Action Research and Minority Problems, he described action research as a comparative research on the conditions and effects of various forms of social action and research leading to social action that uses a spiral of steps, each of which is composed of a circle of planning, action and fact-finding about the result of the action. Hi everyone, my name is Sam Junsian. My metric number is 18. A0809. I am an employer in ABC Frozen Company. A preceptive inquiry. If we want to improve performance, our defined position is to ask what's not working. Along this line, First, identify the problem. Second, analysis possible causes. Third, generate solution. Lastly, implement best solution. 
so in the end, all the problem can be solved. After a while, a difficult best view SAPS energy, motivation and good view from our people. The very quality we need if we are to improve our organization. How else can we look at it? So, let's start with what is already working. Inquire into what worked. Imagine how good I could be. Agree how good I should be. Comment to what will be. And organization becomes success racing to mission. Okay, let me tell you how that is work. People like talking about their success. They actively engage in discussion that focus on what works. When sharing positive story with colleges, people gain confidence in their ability to deliver. Is their experience not someone else's best practice? Involving lots of people in this positive conversation. Gracious participation in making positive change come about. Generating a positive image of the future influences our behavior in the present. And that's act to bring about the anticipated positive result. For example, if the company has one team that becomes the best team, they will affect others team to work hard, so the company will become the best. In conclusion, an appreciative approach is a philosophy, not a technique. Let it influence your team leadership, your one-to-one -one management as well as your organization development. Uh, my name is Nor Kamilia Binti Mautrafli. My metric number is A, uh, 18A0477. I'm from employee group. It has uh, four items. First, self-interest. The fear of losing something of value if a change occurs. Second, misunderstanding and lack of trust. Okay, uh, the fear that the cause uh, of change will outweigh any potential gain. Okay, third, uh, different uh, assessment, different perspective and perception uh, of what uh, change means, uh, for example, between uh, managers and subordinates. Okay, last is uh, low tolerance uh, of change, uh, fear of lacking the skill and behavior required of the new situation. Okay, for the organization uh, resistance, resistances, it has six. It has uh, six. First, uh, structural uh, inertia. An organization will remain uh, at rest unless uh, accepted uh, upon by an outside, uh, outside force. Uh, inertia act uh, uh, counterbalance of uh, sustained uh, stability. Second, a limited focus of change. Uh, organization uh, make up of a number uh, of interdependent uh, subsystem. Uh, you can change one without uh, affecting the others. Okay, third group uh, inertia. Even if uh, individuals uh, want to change their behavior, group uh, norms may act as a constraint. Okay, uh, then uh, treat to expertise. Okay, change uh, may uh, threaten the expertise uh, of uh, uh, specialized uh, groups. For example, uh, they change to outsource the information technology function. Uh, fifth, uh, three uh, to establish power relationships. 
uh, distribution of decision making uh, authority can treat a long uh, established uh, relationship for example uh, adding members to the decision teams uh, uh, for the last uh, treat to uh, establish uh, resources allocation okay uh, those who control uh, resources can see uh, changes uh, as a treater uh, for example, purchasing uh, manager uh, who direct to the chief uh, executive officer uh, has no to go through the chief uh, financial officer. Hi, my name is Nur Shahira Gunti Estate Document and my metric number is A183068484 and my position is an employer. There are 8 ways to overcoming resistance to change. First, Education and communication can provide information. By doing this, employee can stay informed up and are allowed to ask questions. They can participate in the decision process. In dealing with resistance to change, is to get the employee to participate in making the change. Third, through employee counseling and therapy, support and commitment can be built, as well as new skill training can be can be developed or to facilitate adoption to worker, they will given a short paid leave of absence. Fourth, positive relationship with subordinate can be developed. By doing this, the trust be between management and employee will move the company forward. Fifth, implementing the change fairly by considering the view of employee who perceive that the outcome may be negative. As for that, managers have to make sure that the new change is applied equally for all employees. 6. Manipulating and co-potation by twisting and distorting facts to make them more attractive. 7. Employees who accept the change can be selected to make them change champion. By doing this, it will make it easier for other employees to accept the change that happened in the company. And lastly, explicit and explicit force that to apply direct threat or force to the barrier when the speed is important and beginners have power. Hi, my name is Nusha Zwina Ma Ibrahim, A1A 80639. I am as employee. Timeline for change. What is about? For a time transformational change, suggestion. Minimum in a two year, be sufficient time for unfreezing activities. May take a year. Chain process. The facilities may take several months to change from resistance to supporters. Finally, the freezing stage will require from chain champion and former resistors continue motivation and incentive. What is innovation? Innovation, on the other hand, can be described as creativity implemented. Innovation is putting the idea into practice. What is talent management? Talent management is an organization commitment to recruit, hire, retain, and develop the most talented and superior employee available in the job mark. Talent management The best way of deafness of talent activities But first, identify the talent needs. First, new roles. Second, new type of leadership and new skills. Identify existing talent gaps. First, more people. Second, new leaders and missing skills. Hi, I am Nova Tia Binti Ismail. Number three, no, A1 A A A zero four six eight, and I am from Ipsi Group. Today, I want to continue present about data management. Here we can see how we can to implement telemanagement. 
first we must identify organizational goal second is identify organizational diverse and challenge from internal and external this can include things like uh, highly competitive job market or new technology step three is conduct a gap analysis for example if our company ABC frozen food and beverage has a goal to rank number one in the industry we need to identify our current customer satisfaction rating and to rating required to number one in the industry then identify the gap between uh, these two what is uh, define our HR priorities and goals based on the goal uh, that we identified from step 1 until step 3 we must identify uh, HR goal for upcoming years to support the organization uh, to achieve goal step 5 uh, is do an inventory of our current HR talent management process to the team to determine if you uh, if we need to make any charge or add on our process to support the goal and the last step is we have to measure our effectiveness and communicate the result to the organizational okay next is uh, three level of career progress and first level is c-suite position second level level is senior management or general manager third level is young talent here we can see uh, how we uh, can simulate innovative change there are three ways which is uh, fortuning and organic structure we can encourage the information of group among employees who can share a common interest for specific innovative change second is retaining talent uh, it, it is about the ability to retain employees and motivate them to stay long term with the company and the last one is encouraging inter-department uh, communication uh, which is departmental communication can be implemented through management meetings social and recreational events and incentives for the best ideas from the uh, from an inter-department team that's all for me thank you Hello guys, my name is Nurul Jana Binti Saad. My metric number is A188-0728. I am employees. In managing talent for innovation chain has creating a learning organization. An example of a company embracing continuous chain by setting up a dynamic feedback log, learning can become a regular part of daily operation. Single versus double lob learning. Single lob learning is the most common style of learning. It's focused on problem solving, which is improving the system as it exists. For the double lob learning, it's more than facing the problem, it involves questioning the underlying assumption behind technique, goals, and values. Three fundamental challenges for traditional organization. 1. Insisting on fragmentation based on specialization that creates walls that separate different functions into independent and often warring fiefdoms, instead of interdependence that promotes a better team working environment and leads to greater innovation. 2. Overemphasizing competition that creates a dog-eat-dog 
working environment where departments and divisions keep secrets and vital information, believing they will move ahead for others individual or team. And the last is practicing reactive management that misdirects management attention to problem solving rather than creating value to the organization. Resources are spent firefighting instead of strategizing the critical issues that may not be urgent and important for long-term sustainable growth. Key characteristic of learning organization 1. The organization has a shared vision that everyone agrees on. 2. People discharge their old ways of thinking and the standard routine they use for problem solving or doing their jobs. 3. Members think of all organization process activities, function and interaction with the environment as part of a system of interrelationship. 4. People openly communicate with each other, cross vertical and horizontal boundaries without fear of criticism or punishment. 5. People surprise their personal self-interest and fragmented departmental interests to work together to achieve the organization's shared vision.